Back in September of 2016, I made a top 10 list of propaganda cartoons. We had Looney Tunes. We had Disney. We had it all. But the one thing that stood out to me the most was a North Korean animation called Squirrel and Hedgehog. And guys, it's a wild ride. I mean, we're talking about a cartoon that features gunfights, murder, impalement, and even suicide. And all of this is for the viewing pleasure of the children of North Korea. They grow up on this stuff, and it's as big to them as Mickey Mouse is to us. Except Mickey has never waterboarded a person for information. Well, at least not that we know of. Squirrel and Hedgehog is one of the most interesting cartoons I have ever seen. From its symbolism to its violence, this show is more than just a cartoon. It's an in-depth look at North Korea's culture and what it teaches to its children. For the record, I am not here to make fun of the North Korean people. I mean the innocent ones who have to suffer and starve under its totalitarian government. They did not do anything wrong. They were just born in the wrong country, and they can't help that. But for the cartoon itself, we're gonna have a fun time. Off the bat, I need to let you all know how cryptic and scattered the information is about this show. It was made in 1977 by the group called Scientific Educational Korea, or SEK for short. Its animation studio is in North Korea, smack dab in their capital city. They are known for working on movies such as Simba the King Lion and Pocahontas 1. The Princess of American Indians, an animated classic. I kid you not, they put an animated classic in the title. Kind of a bold claim. And if you don't obey me, you know what will happen. I can be ferocious. Stop that hyena! <laughs> I might have to review these movies in the future. For both of these Disney ripoffs, SEK worked with Mondo TV for distribution. There's actually a book called Pyongyang. A Journey in North Korea, where a Canadian animator works for SEK for two months and writes about how difficult it was to work there. Outside of that, there isn't much information about the studio, but that's kind of expected when your country is called the Hermit Kingdom. There are even rumors of Japanese animators being kidnapped and forced to work for the studio. SEK might have worked on a few collaborations via outsourcing, but Squirrel and Hedgehog, that's homegrown North Korean right there. The cartoon is about the anthropomorphic critters of Flower Hill. There are all kinds of animals that live there, but the main ones are the squirrels, who are the leaders, the hedgehogs, who are the soldiers, and the ducks, who are the navy. On the other side, you have the mice, weasels, and wolves, the enemies of Flower Hill. Though the wolves did not show up until the second version of the series. In a nutshell, these factions go back and forth fighting each other, with Flower Hill winning time and time again. From what I could gather, there are 33 episodes of the show, though the online archive says that there are only 31. Also, most of them are not translated, so it's kind of hard to know what's going on. And that can be a problem, because this show is wild. <laughs> For the record, Sonic the Hedgehog came out in 1991 while the Hedgehog Soldier has been around since 1977. So that spin move of Sonic makes you think. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. As I said, most of the episodes are not translated, but fortunately, episode one was. It starts out with the squirrels getting attacked by the mice and weasels. The squirrels then try to build some shelters, and Bear shows up. 
He usually protects them, but the squirrels are starting to wonder if he's growing too unreliable. The mice then get the bear drunk, and he doesn't show up to fight off the bad guys during the next attack. But they did not need bear, because they had guns. Guns that shoot bullets and a bridge of ducks to walk across. I can only imagine what's going through the mind of these mice soldiers. Is this bridge quacking? Ah! So who really needs a bear when you got a tank? Flower Hill was saved, and the squirrels and hedgehogs were the new defenders of it. So let's break this down. There's a lot of symbolism at work here. The squirrels, hedgehogs, and ducks are the people of North Korea. Flower Hill is North Korea. The mice are the South Koreans, and the weasels are the Japanese. And the bear? That's good old Soviet Russia. Couldn't you tell? Around this time, North Korea was trying to project that it could no longer depend on the Soviet Union and that they needed their own strong military. Again, I watched all of the episodes, and it's basically the two sides fighting one another, with Flower Hill crushing the mice and the weasels. But in the second season, the wolves showed up, and guess who they represented? America. America. The Americans finally arrived and they were quite the badasses. And the animation got even weirder. As far as the quality of the show goes, it's not terrible. I've seen worse, but this show does have some insane physics. Karate fights that would put the Matrix to shame. Since I reviewed episode 1 of the old series, I decided to review episode 31 of the new series. It continues on where the old show left off. The same characters are even still around, but this time, it's rocking computer animation. In this episode, the squirrel character is undercover as a spy and is trying to get the wolves to believe him. The leader of the wolves is skeptical, but he has a foxy assistant to help him out. I just want to let you all know, even in a totalitarian dictatorship, where people are stripped of their freedoms and are forced to submit under penalty of death, furries still exist! <laughs> I guarantee you that the North Korean people are like, hmm, for an American fox, she's kind of hot. Episode 31 includes political espionage and even executions. You know, things for kids. Also, these mega weapons are totally symbolic of nuclear bombs. Squirrel and Hedgehog is complete propaganda, but funny enough, it's actually not that bad and has an interesting story. But for North Korean kids, uh, nah. This is just filling their heads with the wrong stuff, and the government encourages it. They start them off as soon as possible. Check out the lyrics of the song in episode 31 and what it's saying. <laughs> The show is trying to teach kids that their home, North Korea, is everything to them, and they should fight for it no matter what. That it is perfect and everyone else is bad. That you should be honored to die for it on the battlefield.
There was an article from the LA Times where these journalists noticed the decor of a nursery in North Korea. It had pictures of the characters of Squirrel and Hedgehog with guns and grenades. There's even one showing a duck shooting a weasel. According to a North Korean from the article, Squirrel and Hedgehog is beloved by North Korean kids, and that seems evident. Take a look at this video of some kids singing about the show. <laughs> This cartoon normalizes violence against foreign countries. The North Korean government pushes this agenda in general. I mean, what kind of eye chart features guns instead of letters? This cartoon has an objective, and that's to mold the young people of North Korea, to make them into model citizens and soldiers. And ultimately, it's very sad. Overall, my heart goes out to the people of North Korea and how they fall victim to its government's propaganda. They deserve better. But the show itself is quite interesting. I mean, if you put aside its blatant propaganda, you got yourself a pretty good political thriller. I was actually invested in the story and what was going to happen next. Should this be shown to young children? No. Does this show have a negative impact on the kids of North Korea? Yes, but that doesn't mean we can't learn from it. Squirrel and Hedgehog is one of the most unique cartoons I have ever seen. It's a piece of content that truly reflects its culture, how it shapes the young minds who watch it. The same thing can be said about Americans and the racist cartoons that aired in the early 20th century. It reflected our culture at the time, but we were able to put it behind us, perhaps someday. The North Koreans can do the same. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe for future content. Also, I want to give a shout out to my top tier sponsors on Patreon. Blair, Isfan, Chad Butler, Screenflare, Mr. Skids, and Illegally Sane. Thanks to all who support me and thank you all for watching.